It wouldn't be a scuffed kitchen video without cleaning up some kind of mess, so here we go. Hello everyone and welcome to the scuffed kitchen. Today we are making German beef roulades with two side dishes, tato dumplings and braised red cabbage. This is considered a traditional Sunday feast around here and it is quite indulgent but oh so delicious. This recipe has been taught to me by my mom and it was always a highlight of my childhood. A roulade, for those who don't know, is a rolled piece of meat, usually with some kind of stuffing. This authentic German version is made with beef. Well, there's quite a few steps to it, so let's get right started. This recipe contains three parts. If you are just here for the beef roulades and how to make them, skip ahead to these times. Anyway, the first step is to prep the braised red cabbage. This is a traditional, slightly sweet, slightly tangy slaw that's usually eaten hot. Also, because the flavors need to melt together, I highly recommend making this part of the dish a day ahead. As you can see, the list of ingredients is rather short. You need half a head of red cabbage, a tart apple, one onion, apple vinegar, grape juice, a couple of bay leaves, cloves and finally a little bit of sugar. If you want a bit of a more complex flavor profile, you can substitute the grape juice with dry red wine. First start by removing the wooden stem from the red cabbage. Make two diagonal cuts on the quarter block and it will pop right out. Afterwards, slice the cabbage into long strips about half a centimeter in width. Put everything to the side. Next, peel the apple. In my case, I will only use half and munch on the rest while cooking. Uh, remove the core and dice into medium sized blocks. The onion needs to be split in two parts. Half of it will be finely diced, the other half will be used as a vessel for the cloves. More on that in a second. First peel the onion, then cut it in half lengthwise. The bottom part will be diced. No need for fine dicing, all of this will cook out anyway. The top part needs to be washed thoroughly and then just prick it with the cloves so that they are wedged in there really firmly. This way they won't get lost in the mass of cabbage later and can be removed quite easily. Now the cooking can begin. Melt a small amount of butter in a pot over high heat. Add the apple and the diced onion, stir and then add the sugar. Make sure the onions are translucent before going to the next step. Stir occasionally so nothing gets burnt. Now, add all of the cabbage. This pot is the perfect size for this, as the cabbage will drastically reduce in size. Immediately after the strips are in, add 2 tablespoons of the apple vinegar. This ensures that the cabbage keeps its shiny red-purple coloration. Give it another stir over medium heat. Once everything is coated, add around 300 ml of water. Add the cloved onion and the bay leaves, always stirring, never stopping. Now add a generous amount of salt, bring to a boil, reduce to simmer, add the lid back and let it cook for about 45 minutes. You will see that the cabbage takes on a much more uniform purplish color after a while and that way you know that it is done. Finally, season to taste with more vinegar, more salt and grape juice. Be a bit careful with the liquids, less is often more and only add a little bit more tablespoon by tablespoon. Now, you can in theory start eating, uh, however this type of cabbage dish tastes better the next day. So let it come down to room temp and then pop it in the fridge overnight. With that part of the recipe done, let's move on to the potato dumplings. Another very German side dish. 
For these, you only need waxy potatoes and a little bit of extra potato starch and that's pretty much it. First, separate your potatoes by weight. You will need 4 parts raw potato for 1 part cooked potato. Let's get the annoying part done, which is obviously to peel everything. The raw potatoes here will need to be finely grated. Once done, dump the potato mix into a clean, dry cheesecloth. The next part needs a bit of muscles. You need to squeeze as much liquid as possible out of the grated mass. Every bit of water that's being kept in the potatoes will increase the likelihood of making soup instead of dumplings, so be as thorough as possible. Once you're happy with the result, put the starchy water away. The potato dough should now look something like this. If you can pick it up easily without major sticking and it keeps its shape, it's good. Put this to the side. Now, peel and dice the remaining potatoes if not done already and cook them over high heat. Begin with cold salted water and start a timer once the water starts boiling. The potatoes will take 15 minutes from this exact point. To prevent the water from boiling over, just leave the lid slightly ajar. Once done, remove the cooking liquid and move the boiled potatoes to a large mixing bowl. Mash them roughly with a fork. No need for a super smooth mash, we just want to use the starchy goodness as glue to hold everything together. Add 1 or 2 tablespoons of potato starch and all of the raw potato mass, then give it a thorough mix with your hands. The combined dough should be cool enough already, so it will be safe to handle, but your mileage may vary. Once the dough is mixed, you will be able to form a ball without major sticking. However, there should be just a bit of stickiness. In my case, I could feel there wasn't enough starch, so I added a bit more and incorporated this thoroughly as well. Once you're happy with the result, form the dumplings to somewhat tennis ball sized spheres. As you can see, the dough does not stick to my cutting board, but it does stick a little bit to my hand. And this is the perfect consistency. Once you're done, put the dumplings to the side. You may need to add cling film to prevent them from getting a grey sheen if you're not fast enough for the next steps, but even if there's a little bit of a sheen, no worries, you can safely eat the result. It is finally time for the beef roulades. All the ingredients you can see in front of you are for the roulades itself and the sauce I will be making afterwards. The star of this dish is the meat. It is thinly sliced beef from the top side. Ask your local butcher to prep this for you. The beef should be a long slice, about 3-5 to five millimeters thick. This tube here contains mustard, as it often comes in Germany. Use Dijon as a substitute. The beer here will be used for the sauce. Aside from that we got cornichons, onion, black pepper, bay leaves, juniper berries, pork rind and lastly beef stock. Before starting with the assembly and cooking, the mise en place is important to get everything organized for later. I start by sharpening my knife and then cut the pork rind into thin, small strips. Discard the leathery skin at the bottom. After that, I finally dice the cornichons and put them aside. Next I peel and dice the onions. It's okay that not all the pieces are the exact same size, so later they cook at a slightly different pace and make a much more interesting bite in the roulade. Make a few vertical cuts, turn the onion by 90 degrees and chop them up nicely. The sharper your knife, the less likely it is that you will start crying while doing this. Put the onions to the side. This part here will be for the stock and sauce later, so it's not necessarily to finely dice these vegetables. Roughly is more than enough. I opted for carrot, celery root, a leek and parsnip today. Very traditional German ingredients for soups and stocks. Don't forget to peel everything before slicing.
With that out of the way, we are finally at the interesting part, filling and rolling the roulades. First, lay them down and make sure to unfold them properly. If not done yet, pat them dry with a kitchen towel. They need to be as flat as possible. And get your mustard. Coat the roulades on one side generously and try to spread the mustard evenly around with a butter knife. Then season the roulades generously with freshly cracked black pepper and salt. Now for the filling. Start by distributing the pork rind strips evenly. Afterwards add the onions and lastly the cornichons. It is not really possible to overstuff the roulades as the overfill will just squish out during the rolling. So be generous and try to coat everything evenly. Tuck the sides in a bit and start rolling from the thin end. Make the roll as tight as possible, occasionally removing the excess filling as mentioned before. Use both your hands to get into it. Once rolled, the meat needs to be held in place somehow. Usually I and you should go for butcher string, but I realized just a few minutes before filming that I ran out, which is why I opted for skewers instead. It wouldn't be a scuffed kitchen video without cleaning up some kind of mess, so here we go. Here we are, finally, at the cooking stage. First add a little bit of unsalted butter to the pot. The pot should be able to hold your roulades flat, but still packed tightly without too much space on either side. Wait until the butter melts, add a little bit of vegetable oil to raise the smoking point and gently add your roulades. Plop open the beer, very important. Back to the roulades. The skewers here made browning the meat a bit harder, but uh, try to get proper browning on all sides before adding the liquids in a hot minute. I can already see here that this is not enough and the skewers prevent proper browning on two of the sides, but it is what it is, I gotta roll with it. Once you're somewhat happy with the result, add the beer and beef stock in equal parts until the roulades are barely covered. Add the bay leaves, juniper berries and soup vegetables we prepped earlier. In case you're wondering why my bay leaves are all cracked, well I wondered the same, that's how they came out of the package. You can also add the rest of the filling that we didn't need earlier and that was squished out. Bring the stock to a boil, then reduce to simmer and let this cook for around 90 minutes. Occasionally turn the roulades around. At this point, I also spontaneously decided to add a bit of dry thyme to the stock for extra aroma. Once simmering, add the lid and patiently wait. In the meantime, we can heat up and cook both of the side dishes. Pop the red cabbage out of the fridge and gently heat it up on low to medium heat. Keep it warm until serving. Also, get a huge pot with salt water to a boil. Remove the bay leaves from the cabbage. We don't want to crunch on them during dinner later. While that is heating up, add the potato dumplings to the boiling salt water and immediately reduce the heat to a gentle simmer. If you boil these, they will completely fall apart and disintegrate. Instead, very gently simmer them for 20 to 25 minutes. After a while they will start to float to the surface of the water once they soaked up enough of it. Try to time the potato dumplings so they are finished together with the roulades and you can serve them together simultaneously. In the meantime, let's briefly check up on the beef. Yep, that's looking great. After around an hour of cooking, you can do a few taste tests and add salt and pepper if necessary. If you try taste testing before, the beer flavor will be still too strong and it will kinda ruin the result. So be patient and only taste test when it's time. Once everything is done, gently remove the roulades from the stock, remove the skewers and keep the roulades warm. For the sauce, you could either use butter for a great pan sauce or a little bit of cornstarch slurry as thickener. I personally think for this dish here, a butter sauce would be a tad too heavy for my personal taste, that's why I went with the slurry. Strain the vegetables from the stock, they did their part and imparted all of their delicious flavor. 
this here is what we want. Add the stock back to the pot and gently heat it up. Once boiling, add the cornstarch slurry while whisking so you don't get any clumps. Slowly, bit by bit, add more slurry and cook it out until the sauce can coat the back of a spoon. Quite honestly, this sauce here is still a bit thin, but it is what it is. All that's left is plating. I will not go for the fancy restaurant type stacked plate, but rather go for the homestyle version that my mom used to make. A few dumplings, the cabbage and the roulade. A little bit of parsley as garnish and a little bit of sauce for the meat and we're done. Here it is, German beef roulades with potato dumplings and braised red cabbage. A true Sunday feast. Now let's finally see how the roulade looks from the inside. As you can see, it is tightly packed and rolled, but the meat is super tender and moist. Excuse me a little bit while I eat this, I just can't help it. The rich sauce paired with the tangy cabbage, the tender meat and the unique texture of the dumplings make a combo that is just hard to resist. In hindsight I made two major mistakes. The meat should have been browned more and the sauce needed to be thicker. Aside from that, this is perfect. Let me know what you think in the comments below and while you're here, please leave a like and subscribe. See you next time! Thank you.